Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coast Stream today. Ron Nicolini, along with the one and only Brian <laughs> wow. Natto, uh, starting the week off here with my partner, and it's going to be a good week. We got a fast main track. We have no turf racing. We got the all-weather torpedo, but you can see that turf course. It's starting to look pretty good. It's coming around, buddy. Yeah, we're uh, targeting. Uh, I guess it'll be the first or whatever that uh, first uh, Thursday, I think, in December is, and we go to five days. So. A lot of excitement. We debuted the walking ring behind us last week. It looks absolutely beautiful. The turf looks beautiful. The championship meet is beckoning. So there's a lot to look forward to in here in Hollandale Beach. Yeah, when I walked in this morning, they had all the sprinklers going on it and everything. Mm -hmm. We're going to have that new uh, system to uh, water yeah. you know, uh, to water the turf. So it's going to be a fantastic meet. That's a little later on. We've got to deal with today. And we are going to have a $50,000 yep. gross jackpot guarantee in the Rainbow Six. Going to kick off in race number four this afternoon. So four through nine is where you'll play that. And it, it's been, uh, people have been right around it again. I agree. It's, it's percolating. We're starting to build, but as Ron and I say so often these are the days to jump in because you know you get a couple prices in there and you get a couple logicals in there when this thing is still young and growing you've got a chance to sweep it and who doesn't want 50 grand? Well, you mentioned the other day when they hit it the other day and it paid $80,000, there was only one sneaky you had to try yep. and figure out in there. So uh, uh, the rest were all at logical. So race number one today on Friday afternoon is going to be a one-mile maiden claimer for Phillies and Miss 3 and up. And $12,500 is the claiming price. We did have an early scratch of the number six, Magna Colors. And also note there's a jockey change on the number five horse. Make that right a Sammy Camacho. That weight will now be changed to 120. 20 pounds for that uh, race there because uh, the apprentice lounge Elsa Morrison off two mounts today. I don't know. That was probably, I don't know if she's yeah. off all day, but she's certainly off that one and one later yep. on. So getting to this first race, you put an early pick five ticket together. Yeah, it's got my long shot as well down inside Sweet Brody, and we'll get to this race in a second. The spreads are early, as you can see there. Number two, Astral Weeks on top in race two, and then much more condensed from there on out. Sweet Pearl gets the vote. In the third, 21 is the order in race four. We'll have a replay of Seeking Stardom in O Darling on there. And then I'm going to... I'm going to single Zam Fear. You could go four or five deep in race five. I'm not going to give you a ticket that's $128. I'm going to single Zam Fear with the leverage play. We'll show you that replay too because the gang's all here in race five. And have my buddy Frenchman Street yeah. on the ticket. You know that. That's he's like, in the mix. Yeah, he's in the mix. You got to have it. So uh, race number one, uh, getting to the current uh, two to one favorite is the number two, Uncaptured Faith. And Uncaptured Faith is going to stretch out to a mile after rallying to finish second. And that was good. It was between a pair of next out winners. Now that was going five and a half furlongs on the main track. Jose Pinch and Lionel Ray is handling the at a distance. I, when I was handicapping this race, Brian, I kept going back, going back to the horses that ran okay at a mile, yeah. and I just didn't like any of them, right. so I went with a horse that's going to stretch out today and, and prove that it can handle the one-turn mile. You know, I think, I think that's fair, because especially in these races, and this horse is going to stretch out with tactical speed, a lot of times what happens in these races, lower level maiden claiming races, these fields get so gapped out, you get to the far turn, you're seven behind, and you just don't have any chance to make up ground. I didn't really like Uncaptured Faith, but I get what you're doing here because this horse is going to be close throughout under one of the best riders we have, too. Lionel just puts him in the right spots consistently. You did go with the inside horse in here, and that's Sweet Brody who's going to take a drop today to the 12-5 level. Yeah, so here's also what I did, Ron, too. This horse ran a mile last time and seemingly really woke up. Not necessarily, uh, you know, on running lines, but he ran a 42. He ran an 18 on the thoroughgrass. That's as good as anybody's done here. What does this horse have that no one else does? Upside. He's only run, she's only run two times, excuse me, on Captured Faith, 0 for 15. We've got 0 for 14. Now, we've talked about this a lot. That's worked in the past. Yeah. We've seen them winning races, but at least with Sweet Brody, she's improving. She's going the right way, and I think, you know, getting to a mile last time seemed to help her. We put the blinkers on, too. Let's get a little more tactical speed. Yeah, and that race she come out of produced a couple of next out winners. Uh, the number three horse is where I went in second, Holiday Princess. This one, four for six in the money at the distance. Wheel backed, rallying to finish. Just an okay third against this level for trainer Larry Brates. You got the apprentice Jaime Torres in the saddle to this afternoon. And, and I think they hit one of the horses that's run well in a mile. Yeah. I wasn't sold on. No, I agree totally. And, you know, you, you mentioned she's four for six in the money. 
at this trip. That means she's one for six in the money at the other trip. So mm. if nothing else, this seems to be a good spot for her. And we've talked a lot about the seven pound apprentice now. Jaime Torres is really, I, I really feel he's acquitted himself nicely with limited sample size. And, you know, those, you know, it's just a wide open race a little bit with the seven, one a knockout. This one, Dwight Puck and Miguel Vasquez, a leading rider. Well, wow, you got to take note when Miguel lands in spots like these. There's no doubt about that. Let's flip the page, go to race number two this afternoon. This one is a one mile claimer for three year olds and up. And these are non winners of two in life 12, five down to $10,000. No scratches in here. And I too went with number two, Astro Weeks, who's going to the Peter Walderbaum. And adding Blinker's first start, he came up empty against those condition claimers, going seven furlongs in August. Uh, he broke his maiden for 12-5, going a mile. You're getting leading jock Miguel Vasquez in a sharp barn, uh, a six to one on the board. I had to go here. Yeah, and, and a couple things say to me we can ignore that total no show last time because Peter claims for 6250. Now we haven't seen him since that race and, and let's just be honest he was not good at all in that spot but he he freshens him up he doubles him in class and he puts miguel on so to me and i i guess i can kind of speak for you because you put him on top two we're expecting he gets back to those runs two and three back which put him squarely in the mix against a group like this you got the number four the twins sneakers in second from the one and only happy alder yeah home bred for happy and uh, that race last time was pretty good now he's off a little bit of a freshening too but i don't really mind that and you know, he's got some pretty consistent form figure-wise, at least, so I, I think he's going to run a representative effort in here. The number five, Charming Charlie, is hoping to save just a little more for that stretch drive. Chase the pace, finished a distant third at this level and distant for Colin Mara. Had a win last weekend. Yeah. Keeps it a family affair today with Romero Mirage at the controls. And just a wide-open race from top to bottom. If you don't like Astro Weeks, you can go all here. Yeah, and I, I agree with that totally. I, I kind of feel like Charming Charlie, he's got that big figure, 13 and a 71. And I kind of feel like that's because Desert Ruler ran off the screen that day, you know, and he kind of carried everybody with him. I'm a little worried about him running back to that race. Let's go to race number three this afternoon, about a mile 16th on the Tapeter claiming Phillies and Mayors three and up, $10,000, no scratches in this particular race here. And I did go, and I think you did too, with yep. the number two, Sweet Pearl, who's stretching out just a bit after returning from the layoff to finish second to a hard knock and repeat winner called Journey to the Moon. That was a 16 starter going to miles, 70 yards, sees a Figueroa, doesn't start a lot, but everything no. he starts runs well. Jesus Rios facing $10,000 open claimers today. Yeah, I think that that's very key. And what's the other thing, too? What's the best race showing on her page, Ron? <laughs> it's that race last time. It was on the Tapita. It was against much, much better. Cesar Figueroa, 22% on the year. And one of those reasons is he knows how to spot his horses in perfect spots. Four-year-old daughter of Palace Music gets some serious class release from here. We want to talk about the number one co C. This one goes to the Bobby DeBonabon after the claim. A couple of solid efforts going long on the Tapita. Includes that score at this level and distance. Two starts back. Wanted to show you just how good he's been going with Lionel Reyes. So here's a jock and trainer stat. Lionel Reyes and Bobby wow. DeBona over the last six months. 13 for 31, 42%. 61% in the money. 397 is the return of investment. So if you see these two hooking up. I suggest you give it a second look. <laughs> I would have. I knew this was a good stat. That's that's. I didn't think it was 42 percent. That's a giant number. We're almost doubling a two dollar ROI at 397. Bobby D. Who's better than him? And if you go you go to and stretch it out to a year, which I did originally, mm -hmm. it's not that. It's like 30-something yeah. percent. I just wanted to show you how well they've been doing just re recently. So I put that one in second. You did go with the number six horse. She's so pretty in second. Yeah, I mean, uh, Hyro Land's here. We're coming out of those Del Mar, California races. The other thing I like here, too, is you go back now. Look at our sister track, Golden Gate. Obviously, those are Tapita races, too. She's got big numbers. She's got eights and tens and the buyers fit too. And she's got the right running style. We'll show you those Horse Racing Nation graphics a little later on. Stalking style routing on the Tapita is where you want to be. And written today by MCL Jaramillo. If you got the early yeah. card, it says Edgar Perez, but it's MCL Jaramillo in there. And in race, uh, also I want to talk about real quickly the number four, Serenade Kitten, stretching out to the eight and a half furlongs, hoping to parlor here, stalking style into a victory over this very familiar competition. Oscar Gonzalez, Sammy Camacho, named to ride. Horse is not that bad, I think, for you want a horse for the try or super. Maybe you go with a horse like this. Yeah, I, I kind of think a win might be a little out of reach, but you can offer some value underneath. Let's take a short break. 
And when we come back, it'll be the fourth race, and I'll have my Rainbow Six ticket for Friday afternoon. It's probably the most beautiful racetrack in the country, to be honest with you. The background is just beautiful. I love Gulfstream Park because of the grandstand and the racing. The weather is beautiful. The facility is phenomenal. The Gulfstream Championship meet has become one of the top events of the year. You could come out on a Wednesday and see a future Preakness winner. They're off in the Preakness. The run happy Santa Anita Derby. Got the unique six and a half down the hillside turf floor. A whole lot of great racing here in California. And uh, we're off. We have all three surfaces here, the only racetrack in the country to have all three surfaces. Being close to the ocean, being surrounded by some of the greatest horses and riders in history, it's, it's amazing. It's the prettiest thing you've ever seen. There's no one else has a background like we do. Welcome back to Gulfstream today, Ron and Brian here. Race number four is going to be about five furlongs on the Tapita Maiden Special Weight Philly two-year-olds. Nice full field of ten to kick off the Rainbow Six. Uh, before we get into the race, we'll take a gander at my Rainbow Six ticket, $32.40. And I got a single all the way down. We'll talk about the fourth race in a min minute. Uh, you know, Zamfir is absolutely the one to beat in race number five, but I got my old buddy Frenchman Street, and I thought maybe as for Bodie can run well in there, and I uh, just wanted some coverage. Race number Number six, uh, my top pick is at the crossroads, but I use Coffee House and Sister's Duty in there. Race number seven, big scratch of a Raspberry Ballet. Yeah. I use Real Doozy and Isadorable Ida in that particular spot. And race number eight, Flashy Two, my top pick, but I got some coverage with J Star Jet and Super Duper Ready. And my single's in the last, and it's just Tis a Giant listed as the gelding debuts for Mike Trombetta. Uh, returns to the all weather surface. I got a stat showing how good he does that exact move, Mike. So I thought I'd take a shot, $32.40 with that $50,000 cent, 50, gross jackpot guarantee. You're, uh, you're back hanging out with uh, Isabel. <laughs> yeah. Is it adorable? Yeah. I eat it again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got to use her on the scratch. Uh, yeah, that's, that's I mean, big. on the scratch. I had her in third, actually, yeah. in okay. that race. So, But, uh, yeah, uh, she's going to come back and win one of these All days. Right. Yeah. I did go on the inside, Brian, with the number one, Oh, Darlin'. I think you got a replay you want to show. Yeah, so Oh, Darlin' and Seek and Stardom come out of the same race. We're going to show it to you here. Thanks, Bob. Here's Oh, Darlin' getting first run. She's the six. Here's Seeking Stardom. Now, she's the nine, and she also is a Dave Fox first-time starter. And we know now, if you've, 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 you listen to Ron and I enough, you know, probably don't have to listen to it that long because all we talk about is Dave Fox second-time starters. And we're going to talk about it again, 32, 32% with a huge ROI. And so not only, A, do you think, well, maybe she's not really ready to roll here. Now, B, she's going to get floated widest after what I thought was making a pretty solid middle move. Old Darling gets first run. She always had first run, and to her credit, you know, she runs huge, too. She gets necked out to, for, for the win, and Eddie Plesa Jr. is not a guy that's necessarily going to crank him up either. And he's 25% second out. But I look at these two fillies, and the other thing, too, is obviously, you know, we're gambling here. You're going to get a much better price on the two seeking stardom than the one O'Darlin. And to me, the horse, they both have a right to move forward. I'm expecting a big move forward today from seeking stardom. Well, maybe I can help you separate yep. those two with this data from Eddie Pleaser Jr. with his two-year-olds making their second start in sprints over the last five years. He's 10 for 38, 26%, 47% in the money, 246 is the return of investment. And as you said, Eddie, second start is yeah. one of my favorite angles. So yep. that's what this horse will be doing today. But you make a great price, you get a better price. And then you got the, the number four I'll talk about in here, and that's uh, Lady Hamilton, who you have a little further down. I think she'll be primed and ready to off for more after returning from a two-month layoff to finish the stock to pay second against special weight foes going five and a half furlongs. It was on the all-weather track. It's Happy Joseph Jr. Edwin Gonzalez named on his daughter of Lord Nelson by Puppet. Yeah, clearly getting the Tapita last time helped her. She didn't run an inch at all on debut on the dirt, but Safi puts her on the Tapita to her credit. She runs big. She's got the, she's got a 16 that day. It's the best number in this field, and you know she won't have to improve that much to get there. We both have the number 10 Via Bella on our ticket, and she had a little trouble at the start. Yeah, we're going to take a look. It's a two-fold replay here. We'll take a look at the star where she kind of loses all chance. And don't forget, this is an Antonio Sano first-time starter that day, and Antonio's 4 or 
with Furster. So she's going to drop out of it right here. That's not that's not good at all. So she's out of it. Don't, you know, other, other thing, too, is we're sprinting here. You don't want to be there sprinting on the Tapita. You do, you're not going to win from there. But now, watch her now coming in, Ronnie, onto the far turn. She gets swept way wide, too. She is closing like a freight train. She actually goes all the way up. And then I think what happened was... Okay, the start catches up with her. The aggressive middle move. I mean, this is a power move here. By the way, she's 15 to 1. And then I think probably the fact that, you know, Antonio's not a guy that's going to crank him up on debut. So I think it all kind of caught up with her here off the far turn and in deep stretch. And she ends up running big. She does give it up. I, I get it. But I, I think you can be really forgiving of that. Yes, yeah, she's rising today into a straight maiden special way. You know, this isn't the toughest group we've ever seen. And she's supposed to move forward with her 15% second out barn. Don't sleep on her. Well, she's going to be a nice price, too. Yeah, she's a $75,000 daughter, practical yeah. joke. And Marco, Marcos Manessis in the saddle thing. Oh, I used to ride on my ticket for all the reasons yep. you mentioned in there. We're going to go to race number five this afternoon. And this one is also about five furlongs on the torpedo today. These are claimers three and up $10,000. No scratches, no jockey changes. Brian's late pick five ticket kicks off in race number five. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, we're going to get to this race in a second. And, and you could go four or five deep. We'll show you the race, too. But I did single, as you can see there. Zam Fear. Race six is a good maiden special weight. Seven furlongs for the two year olds on the dirt. I'm coffee. I'm, at, I'm sister's duty over coffee house using them both. Now, race seven is the one that gets blown up because Raspberry Ballet was going to be probably odds on something to five. She was my best bet of the day. We got to go three deep now down inside to real doozy. Three deep in the eighth, Ronnie, with Killarg's girl on top for me. And that's the order in race 9, 49. Tis a giant scratched out of a spot last week to run into this one, a much easier one. Yeah, as I mentioned, we'll have a stat yeah. on there. Getting back to race number 5. Well, let's show that race so we can talk yeah. about it. Okay, so we got a lot going on here. We put Bob to the test here. Here they all are. Good work, Bob. Thank you. Okay, your finishing order is Ask for Bodie in second, Zamfir in third, Frenchman Street in fourth, New York's Finest in fifth. So we can roll it here. Here's New York's Finest getting dueled on the lead. Zamfir is just going to get blown out on the far turn, and he's third in this race. But uh, I thought with the wideness that he lost, excuse me, the wide ground on the far turn, I thought he, um, I thought he ran really, really well. You're going to see him. He's going to end up getting floated about seven deep here. Yeah, he's really out there on the outside. You can see him. He is uh, coming down in the stretch, and he runs a good race. Yeah. And, and absolutely the one to beat in here. He's the number eight, of course, and you'll see him back there with that wide trip. He's still, you know, interested. He changed leads, and he just came down the stretch yeah. and ran okay. I, I, I have all the reason that, that you, you know, could single this horse to. I went a little different way, but I'll show you the stat of Ronaldo Richards with this horse. Second after the claim, all levels. Just over the past year, he's 4 for 11, 36%. 36% in the money. We talked about this one for four. Yeah, Either he wins or that's he it. doesn't win. That's it. So that's yep. what you're up against. And when he does win, you get $3.22 return of investment. So I found out last time we showed this stat, I couldn't believe yeah. that, that 36 and 36. So uh, we'll see how this horse runs today. I am in total agreement. I did go with Frenchman Street. Who's dropping a notch today? He responded in that first race after the claim by Chris Gaddis with a track to pace fourth that was going five and a half on the to Peter Marcos Mendoza. This is a three time sprint winner on the all weather surface, and I just think this horse could back bat. And you know, I always pick this yeah, horse. He's a cool old dude. I mm -hmm. mean, he's seven years old, 48 starts, and I think it's a testament to just how hard he runs every time that he's been claimed four times out of his last five starts. I and mean, he's a popular guy. He runs his race every time. He'll do it again today. That race we showed you, asked for Bodie in the number two today. Second in front of Zamfir last time out. Third behind Frenchman Street, two starts back. You think he's got to be somewhere on the ticket. He's knocking heads with these guys, and it's Jose D'Angelo with Franklin Gonzalez Jr. in the saddle. Yeah, you know, th this is on the tapita, obviously, but it's probably going to play out like a turf race. You're going to need some racing luck. You're going to need a trip. You're going to need some pace to run into. Who gets it today is the question. You didn't pick Earth again. No Earth. <laughs> no Earth. No Earth. Let's go to race number six this afternoon, and this one's going to be on the main track. Seven furlongs, and it is made in special weight Philly two-year-olds. Really nice race in here. We did have a scratch in here. Horse I did have on top, and that's Omo 10 girl. So uh, David Fork's will, horse will run another day. And uh, you have a video with yep. Coffee House and Sister's Duty, who I have on the ticket. I think this is a good 
kind of exercise in watching race replays. Here's Sister Duty down inside, okay? And Coffee House is going to come in your picture. They basically hit the line together, okay? But you got to ask yourself who ran the better race. And I don't think there's any doubt that Sister's Duty was a month better than Coffee House. <clears throat> Coffee House is going to sift through on the inside. Sister's Duty has been dueling the entire way around while Coffee House was kind of lagging back and kind of licking her chops a little bit. They hit the line together. I want Sister's Duty out of this race. She's drawn much, much better today, too, for Jerry O'Dwyer, and she's going to be a square price. Yeah, she'll be a square price today, but she ran very, very well, as you pointed out right there, and uh, Coffee House and both Sister's Duty in there. I did go a little different way with the five at the crossroads, who I believe is sitting on a winning performance today after responding in the first race after the $50,000 claim. So they jumped in and grabbed yeah. this horse for fifty grand, stalked to pay second at this same level and distance for Edwin Gonzalez right? This is a $230,000 daughter of Practical Joke, and, and I like the fact <clears throat> They know what they're doing this bond to jump in and grab this horse for 50000 stepped it right up to maiden special weight, and did not disappoint. No, no doubt. And there's not a lot of trainers that are going to plunk in for 50. Right. It's a big number. Right. Moves her up. She runs very, very well. She shows she can play at this level, too. She's got to back it up now. And so that, that, that's an interesting race there, as you said. Nice two-year-olds in that race. Race number seven this <coughs> afternoon is a one-mile claimer. Phillies and Mass 3 and up $6,250. And as we alluded to a couple of times today, big scratch in here. Yeah. Probably the biggest scratch on the card for sure, the three Raspberry Ballet. I had this one right on top, and I bumped up Real Doozy, who's dropping into a competitive spot today on the main track. Responded in that first race, uh, after, first race after the claim by Diane Marisi with a set the pace and fade, outing against 20 claimers. <clears throat> Excuse me, going a mile and 70 yards on the torpedo. You're following me too much. Yeah, uh, I yeah, caught it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Diane, uh, you know, this is second off the claim. I love getting back to dirt. Like Ronnie said, I scratch into this one as well. Diane, you know, and Lionel Ray is 21% when they pair up together. they got speed to work with here. I would expect Lionel says, you know what, I'm on the best horse here. Let's get to the lead. You can come catch me if you want to. Yeah, you know, a lot of times you say the inside post, the inside post. This one has that tactical speed needed to use it to its advantage. I think it's a major player in there. Uh, the old number two is adorable. Yep. Ada is dropping to this level in the main track. Face better on the torpedo. She certainly had limited results. Dan Peter has Jose Morelos to top this hard-knocking seven-year-old mare. So I, I think going back to the dirt is going to help this horse this afternoon. Yeah, it's been a long time since she's been on the main track, and she's only run on it a few times. But I you know her overall form while facing better has been pretty good. And again, another horse moves way up with the scratch. Yeah, and, you know, after that, I, you know, Thrilling Baby, you can go with the 410 pin alley. Uh, I just, you know, wide open affair yes. after those top two. The real doozy looks a little... Real tough in there. I think that a lot of people might be singling that horse or thinking about it in that race. Race eight today is about a mile 70 on the Tapeter Claim is Phillies and Mass 3 and up non winners of two races in life. No scratches, jockey changes in race number eight. You did go with this number six in here, and that's a, a nice price. A Killer Grew's girl. Yeah, Killer Grew's girl. Oh, Let's take a look at the replay here because this is one of those spots where I think she ran a little better than it looked. We're sprinting five and a half on the tapita. We know how snappy that is. We know you can't win from the back. She is going to come into your picture a little bit, and she's going to make a pretty sharp late move, Ronnie. Coming from the back here, you can't even see her yet into your picture, and she's going to arrive on the scene, and I, I thought she ran pretty well. Here she comes in now. Thanks, Bob. Good job. And uh, again, you, don't, you can't win like this on the tapita sprinting. She's going to make a solid late dent here after tipping out. Now we stretch out. We get more ground. She's going to be a square price, too. Yeah, she comes running around. She still haven't seen her yet, but she will be around. Have no doubt. She was 22 to 1 that day. So yeah, she's going to come flying here yeah. late into your picture, coming up right. There we go. Yeah. So now we stretch out. She's got a pedigree for it. Certainly Macho Uno on the bottom of this pedigree. I'll look for her to uh, maybe surprise here. The number seven, Flashy 2, is where I went. Who's dropping to the 20 level and returning to the all-weather Tapita today after the sightseeing trip against those 35 condition claimers going a mile on the main track for Elisa Lewis. Miguel Vasquez the top this daughter of Exaggerator, who break her, broke her maiden going long here yeah. on the all-weather surface. So you have to cruise down her past performances, and that's what I'm keying off today. And she's 9-5 to five on the board and probably right this, rightly so in this spot. I agree totally. She's clearly the horse to be getting, you know, draw a line through the dirt race last time. She's back with her friends here. She's back on her surface. We've got a leading jockey, too. 
The number three, Super Duper Reddy, is making her first start since responding in the first race after the claim by Diane Marisi with a wire-to-wire -wire victory over 16 maidens going this distance on the torpedoes. They're going to take the blinkers off this afternoon, maybe to throttle this one down a little bit. I think that's probably right. And this is the one that started Diane on a little run. I think the stat was, I believe, 0 for 23 off the claim, and then she got a couple back-to-back. -back. This was one of them stepping up and facing winners, but let's just be honest here. This is not the saltiest group you're going to see. And what you see with the number one, Lily's lead, this one up there at 3-1 to one on the morning line. I don't know if I missed this one or not. It comes out of a pretty good race that produced a couple of next out winners. Well, that's it. It's a key race. She's got some solid turf form, and I know obviously she hasn't been out in a while, but she comes back with Lasix. She's down inside, and maybe she can pass a few in the lane. The number two, Jay's star jet is stepping up to face winners, responded to both the surface switch and the addition of both Lasix and Blinkers with that maiden victory going a mile. So they threw the kitchen sink at her and she responded. Donald Hunt is Chantal Sutherland in the saddle today. 52 to one last time. 52 to one today. Yep, 15 to one today. She hey, can prove it. We got tries, we got supers. There you go. That one was gonna run well now, now that you made me man, I'm gonna bet it. <laughs> Let's go to race number nine this afternoon, about a mile in the 16th on the Tapita. These are maiden optional claims, three and up. The optional tag, if you're not a Florida bred, confusing to some, yes. you run for the $40,000 tag. We've explained it. It just means if, uh, you know, trying to get these horses to match up. We do have a jockey change in the one. It's Sammy Camacho, 120 pounds will now be the weight. Scratch the six, Ice Vertex, and the number 10 uh, horse in this particular race. Big 30 to one shot on the outside. Uh, I, I had my single in here when you saw my Rainbow Six. There's a giant listed as a gelding. They used locally for Mike Trimbetta. Returns to the all-weather surface. Finished second in three or four recent maiden special races going around two turns. The barn is Here's the stat I wanted to show you. Turf to all weather surfaces. This is over the past five years. This is a big stat. Yeah. 25 for 117, 21%. Mike does this up north all the time. 48% yep. of the money. And still a really good return of investment of $1.78 with a big, big sampling. And Lionel Reyes certainly adds to the appeal. Yeah, and Mike is a sharp, sharp guy and had this horse entered in a maiden special weight last week. Now he gets to play as a Florida bred. Doesn't have to run for a tag. Live Oak homebred, first time gelding, and this is horse is just coming out of much, much better races. What'd you see with the number nine racket in here for Carlos Perez? <clears throat> well, here's it's twofold. He, he's competitive on paper with the best that Tis a Giant has been doing. The other thing is, is as much as of a class relief as Tis a Giant gets, his tapita in, in poly races, the two races on the all weather, not as fast as his turf races. So maybe that bridges the gap to Racket, who's the house horse. Yeah, the house horse in here. We'll see how he runs. The number two, Trap the Wind, <coughs> stretching out just a little bit today after returning from the freshening to finish second. It was against similar going the mile, 70 yards, on the all-weather. Juan Arias, Miguel Vasquez handling second start off the bench today. Yeah, we get the leading jock, and we got a, you know we got the route try under the belt last time. So, you know, not out of the question, as is the, the three uh, play arrow, lightly race. We've got Victor Hernandez. Uh, we, we checked with our Victor here. Yeah. Work for the chief, Alan Jerkins. Uh, the immortal Alan Jerkins from Peru, exercise rider for, for Mr. Jerkins. So uh, he knows his way around. He knows his way around. He'll be driving so far, oh, for riding, I should say, over oh, 9. I thought it was going back to the yeah. Stratus there for a minute. So that's the nine races as we see them. Hope you have a lot of luck with your tickets, but we're not done. We're going to jump right into our lightning round. And as we do each and every Friday, we check out what's going on as far as uh, jockeys and trainers go. Yeah, and as we do each and every Friday, we just wash, rinse, and repeat. <laughs> Miguel is just on a prolific tear, and, you know, Edgard now is riding full-time, and, you know, I think when the dust settles, he'll be a threat to uh, Miguel, but, boy, he is just setting another prolific pace. Yeah, and you see Lionel, Edgar Perez, yep. and MCL Jaramillo, Edgar riding really well here to get those 10 wins, but uh, Miguel, boy, you said, well, maybe, he'll, you know, you fall off a little bit after the, uh, the summer campaign. Just didn't do it, came no. on. And there's the, uh, we'll show you the trainers now. And the trainer's a little closer than it was last time yeah. when we looked at it. It's at nine, six, six, five, and five. Yeah, there's Ronaldo Richards. We've talked about him quite a bit. And, you know, he's not going to throw numbers at you. So for him to up there have five wins is a big deal. Dave Fox doing his thing. And then obviously the top three, uh, we know those quite well. And uh, we got some really, a couple of really yeah. nice two-year-old races on Saturday, tomorrow. Yeah, the Florida Breds are back now. They cut back after we ran them the mile on the 16th in the big ones. Uh, now we're going to come back. And uh, kind of a newcomer, though, actually, because no name dude. Here he is here beating open company in the Hollywood Beach, speaking of Jose D'Angelo. 
and this was on the Tapita boy, and he was 12 to 1 that day or something. He just came. Yeah. He, he was very game in that race. You know, he kept thinking he was going to get nailed by these horses coming on, but he held on uh, gamely for, as you mentioned, I thought he really did well in there. And Turbo's back, and now he doesn't have to see Awesome Strong, which is a big deal. We'll see if we get Zydeco to go as well, because he's cross-entered on Sunday. And, you know, Lynx, when we were going into the, uh, the that race last time out, we were all concerned he might not get the distance. Yeah. She might not get the distance. She's a nice horse. The turn back is going to be huge. She is, and I think Ronnie said it perfectly. The turn back is huge. Now, here she is winning at seven furlongs in the Susan's Girl, and she just grinds you down, and, and, and in the end, she wins comfortably. Uh, I do think it's very, very key that she loses a turn tomorrow and gets back to one. Yeah, you know, I, I think she's going to run exceptionally well in there. Your best bet this afternoon? It's gone. Raspberry Ballet. So oh, what I did say was I didn't double up and, right. and get another best bet. I am obviously going to lean pretty heavily on Zamfir in race five. Yeah, Zamfir. I got to, Tis a Giant in the last race. A long shots today. I'm not going to get it priced now, and that's in race number two for me. And uh, that, uh, well, let's go with yours first. So Sweet Brody, eight to one on the line. Yeah, mine's about 25 minutes. So Sweet Brody down inside the one horse here in race number one. Yeah, and I had asked for weeks at six to one, but I, when I got back and looked at it, I'm probably going to take some money in that yeah. spot. But uh, Astro Weeks taking a little money in the uh, early double as a I was looking while we were on the air today. Our sister set, track Santa Anita has got something big going on tomorrow. Yeah, it's pretty cool tomorrow now. So what they're doing in their Rainbow Six, and it starts in race five, and I'm just kind of thumbing through it now. They've got a bunch of stakes races out there, including the grade two Twilight Derby. If there is one winner, okay, if there's one winner, they're giving that winner a million dollars. And there's the, the carryover is not huge or anything like that, but if there's one winner... You get a million bucks, so yeah. I would uh, I'd advise taking a little peek -see. Yeah, take a little peek, and it's like if there's 200000 in the pool, and it, that person has the one unique ticket, million bucks. So you can't go wrong with that. It's got see, all these different great things going on. As we mentioned, tomorrow with us, two stakes races for the Florida Bread Juvenile Phillies and Colts and Geldings, so we'll see how uh, that works out. But we got nine really good races this afternoon. Yeah, so we'll send it upstairs to uh, track announcer Pete Aiello, and he'll guide you through to the opener, and we'll be back.